Hello people, and I'm just going to give you a quick um, semi-rant video. <laughs> so here you see my lovely um, late 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro. I love the crap out of this computer. It is just such a joy to use and I love everything about it. One thing kind of um, came across my mind though. I was running Handbrake uh, to encode um, a video that was about six gigabytes in size, so I shrinked it down to two, which was good. But I noticed that um, my temperatures were getting up to uh, 99, 100. Uh, the CPU was getting up to about 100 C. And I figured, well, this computer has, you know, all those asymmetrical fans and all that nice stuff. So, I knew something wasn't quite right. It just didn't seem that it should be that hot for a brand new laptop with brand new thermal paste. So, I took the plunge and I did some research and apparently Apple, Dell, and basically any computer that's made by Foxconn Incorporated, um, they absolutely suck at putting thermal paste on. I actually, well, actually I do have a picture on my iPhone here I can show you. Um, they just suck at putting thermal paste on. For one, they put way too much on and it seems like the stuff they use, it's such low quality that it just dries out in no time at all. So here is what I found when I pulled the heatsink off my MacBook Pro. Look at that thermal paste. It's all dried and cracked and this is a brand new $2,000 machine. This should be unacceptable. So, um, I went and cleaned all of that stuff off, and that was the final product. Um, and everything went well. I put the heatsink back on, I put the cover back on, and I just had my first uh, intensive use session since then, today, and it has, it has decreased by about four Celsius, which is great. Um, that is a noticeable improvement, so I'm glad I did it. Problem being, though, um, these pentalobe screws are a pain in the ass, and not because they're pentalobe, no. That doesn't matter. I have an iFixit Protect toolkit. It doesn't really matter about what the bit is because I have it. The problem with these screws is they strip so damn easily, and that's exactly what happened with this one. I stripped it, I was tightening all my screws, um, oops, I was tightening all my screws up, and this was the last one I put in, I was tightening it, and then, you know, I gave it that last final turn, and it stripped completely. I looked at the screw, and I don't know, yeah, okay, well, you can't tell from this picture, but the, basically, it just turned into a hole within a screw, there was nothing to latch onto, it was just, it's done for. So, um, after trying countless hours of um, uh, homemade remedies of trying to get that screw out, such as I tried super gluing the bit to the screw itself, I tried, uh, yeah, okay, there's more super glue, I tried soldering a piece of wire to the screw itself, uh, and there you can see there is where I got sort of far. I got a ball of solder on the screw itself But it just wouldn't come out. I think this is a different Okay, yeah, that was what's what it looked like after uh, I had soldered it and this has been cleaned and everything since but uh, Yeah, it's it's pretty much done for so um, What I did what I ended up doing was I drilled it out with my drill <laughs> I used the smallest bit I had, I drilled the screw out, and everything has been good since. The only problem is, is that the shaft of the screw is still in the case, and I've since tried uh, multiple methods of trying to get that, that um, or not the head, the sh yeah, the shaft. I tried to get that shaft out, but there's no hope for it, it ain't coming out. Um, so I am now missing a screw on the bottom of my MacBook Pro. The thing is, it is completely structurally sound without that screw in. Um, the casing stays on snugly all the way up. It does not flex at all, even with that screw missing. That's the beauty of a metal construction. Um, so I'm not concerned about that. 
Now, I know there's going to be a lot of comments, or some at least, saying, Why would you take a drill bit to a $2,000 computer? And I figured, well, I went, oh, yeah, and before I drilled this screw out, I went to Apple and s told them, hey, can you guys get this screw out for me? They tried, they tried getting it out for me, and they couldn't even do it. And they said, well, if they drilled it out, they would completely damage my bottom case, and I'd have to buy a new one for $150. So I said, screw that, drove home, drilled it out myself, and there's absolutely no damage to my bottom case, except for two tiny hairline scratches, but... Other than that, the, the bottom case is completely perfect, and, um, yeah, I figured, well, and then there's going to be other people on the comments saying, why didn't you just leave the strip screw in there? It's not like this thing is meant to be opened anyway, and it's like, well, yes, there is that argument for some people, but I think, personally, that every year or so, you should clean out the fans, pop the cover off, clean out the fans with compressed air, and every two to three years, repaste the machine. So, that is what I plan to do. I plan to keep this computer for many, many years. So, yeah, I want to be able to do that. So, I figured, well, have a strip screw in there and never be able to open the thing again, or drill it out, have a hole there, and have it still completely fine, and be able to get into it, if I need to. So I chose between those two, and I, I picked the obvious one. So I think it was a fair trade-off. The computer's perfectly fine. There's nothing, you know, there's almost no damage to it. I don't know if I can show you this. I'm going to do the impossible here. I hate doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, you can see right there is, yeah, you can see there's just a hole there now. There's no screw. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't really care. Uh, and as you can see, there is no damage to the case except for those two hairline scratches down there. So, other than that, this computer is perfectly fine. And it's still covered under Apple Care, so this, is not, this did not void my warranty. So, yep, there you go. That is just a quick rant. Oh, and let me, let me uh, give this video a conclusion. Why the hell can't Foxconn, who builds these damn computers, put the thermal paste on right? I've seen this on Dell's. I've seen this on, you know, this computer. It, it, does, it seems like it doesn't even matter what computer it is, they all put the thermal paste on in the same shitty way. They put way too much, and they, it's really low quality stuff, so even if you buy a new computer, guys, I would recommend repasting it if possible. It will help the temperatures, unless it's a really low end system, then it probably doesn't need it. But anyway, yeah, that is just my um, thermal paste application related rant. Um, other than that, yeah, my computer is running perfect now. Uh, my temps are greatly improved, and... Um, yeah, I'll see you guys later.